Hi, Bernard. Another network video, right? Yes. So we are doing the compute network or the network that is uh, for the virtual machines. Um, and you were mentioning uh, something in the previous video that you did some secret stuff. Secret it is not so stuff. <laughs> yes. Uh, after <laughs> after the management networking. Well, basically, it's when the management network is there, you have con line of sight to the domain controller. Then you do the you did the domain join and install some updates. I think that's what you did. Exactly. So I, I, the wording was wrong. We don't do anything here secretly. We show yeah. everything or we, we, we sent you to the videos where we show the stuff. So right. this time watch six and seven from our series, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Now we continue uh, with our so compute or VM network. Generic, it's the generic installation series go for yeah. video six and seven and uh, that's what Carson did behind the curtains. Um, exactly. And what we do now here is we are setting up the virtual machine or the compute network. And the purpose is to have our virtual machines um, be able to talk to the outside world, right? That's it. So if we look at our nodes, that would be this network. So we have um, the same network accessible. Um, on all of the nodes. And um, so we are laying the, the basics there. And uh, obviously the virtual machines that you will create later um, might be in different IP address ranges, right? Uh, or different VLANs. It's depending on what your, uh, your applications or your virtual machines uh, should be stitched together, right? Mm -hmm. So from a hardware perspective, uh, looking at our nodes, this is uh, this adapter here. The, so the 25G Mellanox adapter, um, two ports. We are stitching these two ports together in a compute switch. And uh, on top of the compute switch or a set switch, which we call compute OVM switch. switch um, no compute switch is right. Okay, um, and on top of this, the virtual machines, uh, artificial network adapters will be uh, connected or created. All right, uh, so that's, I think it, did you what want to mention, ah, yes, you wanted to mention, I think something about the network, right? Yeah, but you said it basically. So um, mm. in, in our network uh, mm. is stretched over both sides. Uh, yeah. So the VM network, our VMs can have the same addresses, IP addresses, same right. VLANs on both sides. So um, if you have a very, very fast stretch cluster, so imagine the metro cluster we mentioned in our first video where we had Paris and London, it's possible that you have different IP ranges in London, different gateways to the outside world and, uh, and the same in Paris. Uh, so your VMs would, ha would have to have different IP mm. addresses if they run in Paris or in London. That's not no. the case here. And in yeah. mo I haven't seen any cluster yet where this is the case. So all the stretch clusters I did in the past eight years or so, mm. uh, and of course this was not all uh, Azure Stack HGI stretch clusters. Uh, there is something before that. Um, they use the same uh, IP addresses for the VMs in both sites. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And we can do that here also. Yep. So let's switch to yep. my screen. Mm -hmm. So you see now I'm connected via RDP because we have configured our management adapter. Now I can remotely connect, but still it's, it is the core console. So we don't have now graphical tools here. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's, it's much nicer with copy and paste and so on. Uh, so I, I um, prepared a little script called cre uh, create stretched VM switch. Here mm -hmm. we see the name of our switch and uh, Bernard said it's called VM switch. I changed that. So it's now like in our slides, it's now called compute switch and that's a better name. So I will just set this variable here for the script. Then we have a part again, you know that already from our management uh, uh, video, I want this 25 gigabit Mellanox NIX. It's a two port mm -hmm. adapter as uh, Bernard mentioned, but it has two ports and we want to create a set switch on those two ports. So I grab them over the interface description because there is something unique there that I can, can mm -hmm. uh, choose these two adapters. I grab them, 
And here I do something special. I set the VLAN ID on the adapter to zero. So if we had another design and in our Azure Stack HCI installation series where we installed a non-stretch cluster, we directly used our Mellanox adapter uh, for SMB3 or RDMA, not this one, but other ones. And we configured the VLAN ID there. And I, I had the problem uh, when I changed it to a stretch scenario uh, in a former, former setup, I couldn't work with adapters because the VLAN tech was on the hardware. And we are now creating a set switch and we have to set then the VLAN adapters on the virtual adapters that we don't create here. So uh, that's in another video, right? So um, just grabbing the two adapters, And the next part would be create our set switch, our compute switch. Um, so we get it, uh, we, we look for a switch with the name compute switch, and if it's there, we remove it. Then we sleep a bit and create the new switch. So let's do that. Copy, there's our sleep. Some commands need a little bit more time than uh, than others, but the problem is the prompt is back already. So uh, <laughs> asleep here and there in PowerShell doesn't hurt, right, Bernard? Yeah, if you you know if you automate lots of chunks, especially with networking configuration, sometimes uh, sleep is a good thing. Yeah. So last, I rename the adapters, and I know you have maybe a question. Um, about something special in the switch creation. Yes, so I mean, you do you did uh, enable IOV, which is enabling SR IOV. Um, why are, or is it you know something that you do uh, default by default, or is it uh, is it special to your environment? So, what is your thinking around that? Nowadays, uh, there was a time where that, where I really don't care about the SIOV, um, yeah. and we talk about it what it is. Yeah, but nowadays yeah. I uh, configure it by default because we have maybe some advantages in our VMs. So first, what what is SIOV? It's mm -hmm. a possibility with the PCI um, bus. If you have network cards that support SIOV, you can uh, you can map a part of the card into a VM. So now the VM sees the Mellanox cards, if we would do that. And you have, of course, to uh, install also the Mellanox adapter. So in the VM, you have a bridge of the synthetic Hyper-V network adapter and the Mellanox adapter. And if you are running on a hose that has a Mellanox adapter, it can directly communicate through the Mellanox adapter and doesn't have to go the, the way through the management OS. Look it up if you don't know what the management OS is. So it's a bit faster than uh, the normal Hyper-V way through the management OS. But usually I didn't care because the network is really fast in Hyper-V. Some yep. people um, care and they want to have the last possible gigabit or, or bit out of the of, out of the performance. Uh, there is now another feature that we can use in virtual machines. That's RDMA. So if you have RDMA enabled network cards. We will talk about that in another video. Um, you can also enable RDMA in the VM. Yeah, And for that, you have to map uh, map the part of the adapter over SRIOV into your VM. Mm. You have to install the drivers, and then, then you can use RDMA. And then okay. you, you maybe ask yourself, why should I do that? Is there a use case for that? And this is a nice segue to do a little bit of advertising for another video series we did. We did the uh, Azure Virtual Desktop on Azure Stack HCI series. And there we used a two node storage basis direct cluster for our profile disks. And storage basis direct can perfectly use RDMA between the hosts to transport the data, right? And we could enable RDMA in our virtual machines and use RDMA for the transport. So that would be maybe a use case for this. So long story short, I mean, if you have network sensitive workload running in virtual machines, SRIOV might be a good thing, like file servers, as you mentioned, or 
uh, SQL servers, for example, where you have a lot of traffic and you need to have latency. And I think SRIOV takes a different path when it comes to virtualization. So it's uh, probably offloading the CPU on your host, right? But with a caveat that you need to install the drivers for the adapter in the virtual machine and you need to keep it updated, right? Uh, in order to have it right. working. Yeah, and you, have you, need to keep, you, you have to care about another thing in the virtual machine. Right. And so here's um, the, um, another uh, small minor, minor add to this, right? So uh, in Azure virtual machines, for example, we also do uh, SRIOV um, and that's the advanced uh, net or the, or the networking acceleration stuff, uh, which mm -hmm. gives, you know, uh, better latencies. Um, Better, yep. better performance, right? Yep. So here is what we did. So you see now we have our interfaces. We have the two Mellanox NICs now, uh, mm -hmm. these two, and these are used in the compute switch. And that is all we wanted to do in this lengthy video, right, Bernard? <laughs> so we see, we see each other in another network configuration yep. very soon.